Well, viewers, we got the front end all primed up. Got the cover up pretty good. We got to put two coats of it on there. I just had to put two coats, and uh, now I just need to uh, wrap it up in, in a blanket or something and set it aside. Uh, I need to go down and get some uh, some wet and dry. I need some uh, 400, 600, and 800 sandpaper. Um, I'll probably sand this down with some 600 or 800 and make it because it's pretty smooth came out pretty good I think some 600 800 will do it and all this came out nice and smooth too so we're pretty good there I need I'm down to my last can I thought I was only had one can I had two cans left but I used up this can on just this, this, and the uh, driving hubs, which are down in this box over here. So, um, we tried to get this thing apart and to no avail. So, I'm gonna have to come up with a different strategy for painting this, and uh, I think I came up with a, a pretty good idea. So, uh, but I need the frame back. So, this morning I'm going down to the weld shop. I figure if I get there by between seven and eight o'clock uh, down at the weld shop, they'll probably be there to pick up equipment to go to wherever they're going to do welding and uh, catch them. And uh, my plan is just to pick up the frame and bring it back. I'm not gonna deal with these people. Uh, that way it gives me uh, few days to monkey with it and uh, find a different welder you know if I have to take it all the way up to Chandler I will but uh, I came up with a new strategy for uh, welding up the frame so they won't have to bend the tubes I think that's part of the problem they don't want to have to do this kind of like bending on the tube because uh, it is square tubing it's really hard to bend um, I think I'm just going to do the like rabbit ears and have it go underneath and make them weld it up that way to the uh, ax uh, actual housing. I'll explain more when I get the frame back. But uh, so today I'm going to try and get pick up the frame between now and Friday, try to pick up, get the frame back from them and uh, try to find me another welder. Well, viewers, I just got back from the welders. I drove all the way out there, of course, nobody was there. They're probably out on location, welding up something. <clears throat> so I left them a note on their door and uh, let them know they can't start on it by Monday, April 22nd. Call me so I can arrange to come down and pick it up. So that's where we're at. Uh, so I got the front end. It's all wrapped up in this tarp here and the knuckles are in the box with all the hardware so the only other thing I can primer up right now is brake lever so that's another piece of the puzzle we'll get that done I can't really I come up with a way I'm gonna how I'm gonna do this this uh, stirring column and stirring box and all that but I need to frame uh, what basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the frame, you know, because it'll be easier to paint the frame by itself, you know, primer it, and then turn it right side up, and then primer the other side, and turn it upside down, and then paint the bottom side, and then turn it right side up, paint the top side, then mount this, then tape off some of the stuff, and I got a whole bunch of tarps, and just tarp off the bike, and sand it, and paint it while it's on the bike, it'll be a lot easier. So that's how we're gonna do that so this is the only thing I can do today is this uh, I'm probably gonna go down to Home Depot or uh, Lowe's and see if I can find that orange paint I need to get some more primer and uh, some sandpaper and some hardware I need to get a little bit of hardware but other than that that's all I can yeah, do pretty much get it all, all the grease and grime off of it you see that that's from the chain because it's loose 
and uh, pops up and rubs on it. So I'm glad I got a new derailleur. I might have to, because I changed the original chain, it's got close to 1,300 miles on it. So I might have to take a couple of links out of that chain because it's probably stretched out. And that might be the reason why the derailleur was kicked back the way it was. But I have a new derailleur just in case. But we got a lot of chips everywhere in this thing. So I have to feather out all these chips and feather this out the best I can and paint it up. You never see this anyway, it's on the bottom. And uh, so we'll get that out of the way next. Well, viewers, it looks like leaving a note on somebody's door at their business works. I got a call from Julian. And of course, the wife's gone. She's gone to Chandler for weekly shopping. Uh, that usually is an all day thing. Anyway, he called and said, your frame's done. Fabulous. So, I'm having a much better day today. Sounds like I'm going to have an excellent day tomorrow. So, i got to go pick it up at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. So, in the meanwhile, got all the, whoop, got all the uh, spot uh, primer ring done. Feathered that out pretty good. It came out pretty good. Not too bad. There's not much I can do with that neck, but it's in the metal, and it came out pretty smooth. So, it looks like we just need to sand down this whole thing and go ahead and prime it up, and this will be out of the way. And then I think I'm just going to take it easy for us today, and then worry about uh, start a new day with the frame. Well, viewers, I couldn't ask for a better day. Guess what we got in the mail just a few minutes ago? I just unpackaged it. The new speed controller. Also, I've been waiting on these little guys. These little guys are caps that go over the cranks, you know, where you put the bolts, the bolt in to tighten up the cranks. I didn't like those little plastic ones, so I got these uh, metal ones. And they uh, go in with these little O-rings, and they just pop them in. So I can paint those or do anything I want with them. So we got the frame ready pick up for tomorrow we got the speed controller we got everything we need now it's a matter of finding paint and by the way when it came to the box it was wrapped in uh, bubble wrap and all that but no invert switch so I'm gonna assume that I can hook this up with the golf cart invert switch you know the Ford reverse switch so, uh, if I have any problems and I show it and they say anything, I say, hey, you guys, I told you to send me one if I needed it. And if I didn't need it, you didn't need to send one. And you didn't send one, so I, was, I had to, I was under an assumption because I asked about that switch twice and you totally ignored it. So, I assume I don't need it. Well, viewers, we got the... Uh, brake lever it's all uh, primed up it's got two coats of primer on it looks good all the chip marks are gone so uh, we just gotta let this thing dry and wrap it up in, uh, in some cloth set it, off, set it off to the side and then the next thing is start working on the motor plate uh, we need to find center line we got to put a notch on both ends so it'll sit inside the motor frame on the bike and then we need to get our locations for our holes. And then we need to slot the holes. And then we need to slot where the chain's gonna be. Once I get that done, then we're gonna take it off the bike and set it aside. And then we're gonna start on that motor kit, make sure that that controller they sent me works and make sure that solved my problem. But I'm very confident that was the problem because I wasn't getting the voltage I was supposed to be getting out of that controller. So uh, those are the two, two objectives we want to try and get done in this episode. Well, viewers, I just got back from the welder. 
Uh, it's all been welded up. Looks good. So we're gonna get ready to do our motor plate. And you can see this aluminum plate's longer and how that's gonna fit. Cause we're gonna have to notch it in the front and the back on center line. And that way it's gonna fit in like this, but it'll come out flush to this side and flush to this end. And it'll be exactly the same width. So all we gotta do is put in our motor slots, notch them on each side, drill the holes for the mount mounting bolts. I'm using these uh, flush mount uh, Allen, Allen key, uh, Allen key uh, bolts. There's gonna be seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that'll be mounted down real nice and tight. They're also gonna put some weather stripping in between that to keep the noise level down. So goodbye violins. Hello, silent writing. Well, viewers, we got all the things we need. I just got back from Lowe's. And you see we got eight cans of orange paint here. It's not the safety orange I wanted to get. This is a pumpkin orange. Uh, it came down to price plus quantity. They had the right amount of quantity, and the price on this is outstanding. $3.98 a can, $4 a can. Where that other, uh, the other one I wanted to get was $13 a can. So half price. Can't go wrong. So I decided to go with the pumpkin orange. We got the primer paint. Probably going to need a few more cans of primer, but I took whatever they had. But I'm sure they'll restock their shelves soon. Uh, I got all the sandpaper I need, wet and dry. I got all the hardware I need for mounting all the, uh, the motor plate, the uh, wheel hubs, the motor, everything I need. Got all the hardware. Uh, I got some blades for the uh, jigsaw here for cutting the uh, metal that should do the job and we got us uh, a good square here so we can do the math and mark out the plate so first thing I'm going to do is mark out this plate get all my marks in and start doing the cutting and drilling and slotting and get it mounted on the bike and once I get it mounted on the bike I'll be done with it so we got our notches marked out this is our center line and these are our notches I'm going because um, these are one inch tubes I'm going an inch and a half wide inch and a half deep so that way will give me a quarter inch on each side and each side this way from top bottom so now the next step is to drill a big enough hole so that that blade will fit in the hole so we can cut it this way and cut it that way and cut it that way or this way or that way whatever we're going to draw a hole here and a hole here real close to as close as we can to that corner on each side and over on this one also. Once we get that cut out, then we can set it inside the frame and then we can center it up, clamp it down, then we can go ahead and drill our holes from the bottom through the plate. And I'm going to just use the four holes for at the moment. We'll bolt it down, then we'll set our motor on here and we'll mark the motor mount We'll scribe it or mark it with a silver marker, the center line to that, and match up the center lines on the motor front and back and mark our holes. And then we'll figure out how much distance we need to make the slots based on this, these slots here. And uh, we'll do the slots. Well, viewers, I got the motor plate sitting inside the frame. It's not bolted down yet, but I just want to <clears throat> give you an idea. This is kind of the layout. The motor, this is the 12-volt uh, battery system for the lighting system. So we're going to include that. We're going to 
drill the holes for that as well. Drill the holes for the, uh, the motor. Now I want to point out something. I don't know if you can tell, but see how we got these, it looks pretty crappy. But like I said, bending this tubing is not easy. And uh, you see how this side came out pretty nice. And this side didn't come out as nice. Um, so what do we do? Well, I got it covered, literally. We're going to uh, put some plastic. We're gonna mount some plastic up in here. And this switch is gonna get mounted underneath with the address nut right here for the battery and the battery cable. I'm going to do both sides because all I need is two inches. And we'll do this side with this, like so. So we have plenty. Um, this is that bumper that was sitting out on the street like this. And the dark street was, it was much longer. I've been using it up. But uh, I was coming down the street on my Rad Rover about 25 miles an hour and um, full speed. I had the stock light on it so it didn't illuminate the road too well. And I came up on this thing and I didn't know what it was. I hit the brakes and I went, I went into a slide into a Brody and then I let off the brake and it came back up on me and almost fell. Damn near wiped out. And I go, WTF? And I went back and I picked this thing up and it's a bumper that somebody lost. So I dragged it off to the side of the road and put it in the field and let it by a field. I thought, well, maybe they'll come by and get it. They wanted it. So a couple days went by and it was still there. So I drag it home. My wife goes, you better not start hoarding stuff. And I go, well, this is something I might be able to use. And what's nice about this stuff, you can heat it up, you can bend it, and once it cools, it'll stay there. So you can form it. So I already made um, a terminal block holder. I made up a uh, battery indicator holder. I made up um, um, a console bar with switches on it. So this is really come in handy. So looks like I'm gonna use up a lot of this for this build. So. We're just basically going to cover this up. And it's just about the same thickness as this plate. Just a little less, but not much. So that's going to look good. So we got that covered. But I did mess up on my measurements. Look at the gap. That should, that should have been here. Um, I went an inch and a half. I should have went an inch and a quarter. Because an inch and a quarter, an inch and a quarter, a quarter and a quarter is a half. I did it right this way. I did it wrong this way. But with the battery here and the motor up like that, you won't be able to tell that much. So we're good. So what I've got done, what I've got going here, you see I got a, that's our center line for the motor. This, this motor mount is exactly the same as my 1,000 watt. So all we have to do is line up our center lines, mark our holes, and then slot them. So I'll put it far forward as I can, and then we'll slot them, I think it was a three quarter inch, and the motor mount will be done. So that'll be the next step, is to get this, well, next step is to get this thing all centered, drill the holes, mount the plate with these four bolts. I'm only gonna do four bolts get that done and then the next step after that is to uh, mark out the uh, the motor slots then take it off and go ahead and drill the holes and cut the slots so I'll be the next also step. I just want to point out I think this is where I'm gonna mount my uh, speed controller because the old one I had it on it down here but right here but I have plenty of room because it's smaller this thing's much bigger so I think I'll again use some of this stuff, make me a little platform, screw it down and set this on it and then screw it to the platform. I think it'll look good. So that's kind of how we're gonna do it. 
I think uh, once I get it all done, it's going to look really nice. Well, viewers, we got the uh, motor plate pretty much mounted on um, four bolts. We'll eventually put in the other three. One here, one here, one there. It'll be the uh, flesh mount. Um, we got our, our motor holes. And then we need to measure out three quarters to one inch and put another hole so it's perpendicular make sure they're all straight out this way out that way out this way and out that way then slot it then the motor mount will be done and we got our two holes here for the uh, 12 volt battery so we're almost done with this well viewers the motor, motor plates all done that uh, for the chain the slot for the chain the motor just is up and back and forth that's right on the center line in the front and in the back the battery's all mounted in that's for the uh, lighting system uh, let me loosen these up a little bit so we can show how it moves back and forth there we go and we got a little play from side to side which I want so we can uh, adjust that into the sprocket so we're good well now that this is all done uh, we can take it all off and uh, set this aside uh, for painting for later that would be the last thing to get painted now we're going to move on to uh, tabling the motor and the uh, replacement speed controller and see if that solves my problem and uh, we'll be doing that next Well, viewers, we got this motor kit all laid out and hooked up. We're using the uh, original harness that came with the kit. These are the things we're not using. We're not using the gears. I don't know what this was for. I can't remember. But we're using, um, this is the throttle. This is the power switch. This is for the inverted gears for forward and reverse, and this is for the battery indicator. These are the motor wires, they're all hooked up. Green to green, blue to blue, yellow to yellow. The hall wires are plugged in, you can't get that wrong, it only plugs in one way. And we have our air brake, haha, uh, which is basically a breaker from the battery, the hot side. The ground side hooked up, so all that's hooked up. Uh, this is the uh, three wire from the harness coming to the uh, terminal block for the thumb throttle. This is the wire coming to the terminal block for the battery indicator, which tells me the state of the battery. This is the power switch to the power, and this is your invert switch for forward and reverse, which we're replacing because this, if you remember, this has a uh, only one position it works in, reverse, no other position, it's, it's defective. And I asked them to send me one in a kit if I needed it, or if this was acceptable to use, then they didn't need to send me one, and they didn't send me one, so I assume I can use this. It's basically the same deal. So, everything's hooked up. I uh, verified all my wiring. Well, I did continuity tests on all the wires to make sure all the wires don't have, or, you know, because I made up my own, my own plugs here, 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 and here. And I just wanted to make sure, and on these, so I did continuity tests because they're all hot wired together from here all the way through and no shorts, so we're good. So there shouldn't be any reason why this doesn't work. So we're getting ready to turn this on and see what happens. Just to point out, remember that bumper I showed you? That was made from the bumper. 
That was made from the bumper. And this was made from the bumper. I had a different, I'm gonna be cutting this off because I'm not gonna use this part of it. But this is the control center. Ooh, look at that, we got power. And the battery's not on. You know what that's from? When you, uh, when you power this up, it has a capacitor in there and it stores electricity. And it's really a good idea to drain that out. That'll go dim and it'll finally it'll go out. Yeah, it went out, so no more power. So one word of advice, if you're working on one of these things and you turn on the power, make sure that you bleed the capacitor in, inside here. And that, you start monkeying around with the wires, you could get shocked. And let me tell you, 48 volts will burn your fingers pretty well. Enough to arc weld stuff together. <laughs> okay, so we're getting ready to start this thing. Well, viewers, here goes nothing. Got the key. Just turn on the battery. The system's on. I got a light on the battery thing here. We're going to check and make sure we got bolts coming to the Twenty-two volts. Something's wrong here. I'm only getting twenty-two volts from the battery. So we got a problem coming from the battery. So we're gonna have to check that. So that's not enough to power this thing. Because mm. it won't work. Yeah. So many volts we're getting at the uh, thumb throttle. Three volts. So something's rotten in Denmark. Let me see what the battery indicator says. It says 23.7, 23.5 volts. So something's rotten in Denmark. So I got a bad connection somewhere, so we'll have to get back to you. Well, folks, it looks like I'm gonna be returning this kit. Control it that again. The indicator wire uh, went out on me. The free thumb, uh, the free wire, thumb uh, wire. I'm not getting no volts from this at all. I am getting volts, 52 volts to the controller. The controller is putting out 52 volts to the power supply, but the rest of it's junk. So my advice, don't buy anything from WPH Moto. It's junk. Back controller, second one. I'm done with this. So I'm gonna contact them and tell them I'm returning the kit. We're going back to the 1,000 watt um, brush motor. Well, viewers, I got this all together. Uh, the boxes are in the other garage, so I'll get them out and get this all packed up and um, get a hold, get in touch with Amazon or whoever I need to get in touch with to return this and get my money back. Uh, what I'll probably do once I know the money has been uh, back uh, against my credit card what I'll probably do is I'll order another brush motor and that will have two motors so when I need to replace the brushes I got to do is pop pop it out because it's real simple to take off and pop the other one in and when I have that one I'll take it apart and put new brushes in it so that's how we're gonna do with it I'm not gonna do with a bad product anymore I spent enough time on this already Now we can get moving on the frame, start prepping this all up for painting. Uh, what I want to do is, I want to clear off this table. 
and I want to paint one of these up you know, with the pumpkin orange and see what it okay, looks like. There's nothing worse than have your paper fly up and get onto your paint. So I put it on these little clips, keep the paper from flying up. I did check this, it is a uh, gloss pumpkin orange. So we're going to shoot it and see what it looks like, see if we like it. Well, I really like this Crayon paint. It goes on really nice, and uh, this is only one coat, and uh, drying time is 10 minutes. So I'm gonna love this paint. I didn't need to paint the other side of it, but uh, I'll let this dry a little bit longer. Um, I really like it. I, I like the color of it, it looks good. It's in the sunlight, and that's what it looks like in the uh, shade. So, I like it. So, looks like we got a winner. So, we're at that time point again. We're running over a little over 30 minutes. So, if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Make sure you mash that notification bell. If you have any comments, concerns, criticism, suggestions, or ideas, make sure you use that comment section down below. And like I always say, if I can do it, you can do it.